What is happening, people? Welcome back to the channel. On today's video, we are talking all about how to call whitetail deer. We are going to be starting out talking about the early season or pre rut. Then we're going to talk about the rut and then we're going to transition into the post rut. And depending on what area of the country you're in, is going to determine kind of when the rut happens. So you're going to have to kind of base it off of that. And guys, I'm going to be talking from personal experience as well as just talking about some of the things that you know I've been told over the years on how to call whitetail deer. We're gonna be talking about how to use a grunt call, rattle call in those different parts of the season. So definitely key in on some of that. All right guys, if you like this kind of stuff, please stick around, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's get going with this video. Okay guys, the very first thing that you wanna focus on with early season, which is gonna be typically that mid-September to late October, depending on your location, is don't be aggressive with the call. I can't stress that enough. The deer are not aggressive at that point. Yeah, they're gonna go out and do a lot of sparring and it's gonna be more of a soft spar. They're just establishing that pecking order. Okay, who's gonna maintain that dominance throughout the rest of the season and who is gonna be in line to breed those does when it comes time for that. Okay, so they're just kind of gauging their their competitors, so to speak, but you don't want to be too aggressive with it. When you're going to hit the grunt call, you just need to be really soft with it. And I would even say on this extinguisher, you can switch it from buck to doe very easily. That's why I love this call, but I would put it between doe and buck. That way it's not a very deep, very mature buck because that can actually scare off deer a lot of times. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're doing it. Uh, so another thing that this is going to be general for all the different seasons. So if you're going to be using the call, let's say if you think the deer are going to be coming from this direction and the wind is blowing that direction, I would not call because what a deer does just out of instinct, they are going to go downwind to try to see what type of animal or how big of a buck is making that sound. Okay, so they're just naturally, natural reaction is to circle downwind of you. So if you call in that direction, the wind is blowing, they are gonna wind you nine times out of 10, okay? Even with the use of the different scent covers and things like that and laundry detergents. So just keep that in mind. You really wanna set yourself up to have the wind in your favor. And a lot of times what I'll do, I'll set up in an area to where I know the deer are going to circle downwind of me, but it's going to stop them from doing that. So I'm either going to use a lot of thick brush, a lot of down trees, or it might be like a cliff edge or even a, a stream or something to where they're probably not going to cross it to get downwind. They're going to have to stop short and come down close to you to where you could potentially get a shot. Okay. They call it like a pinch point. Okay. So keep that in mind. Don't blow your deer call or, and your scent at those deer so keep that in mind too so very very important with the wind direction okay and rattling is no different they will definitely circle down wind of you with your rattling okay and they will just their first reaction is to circle right down wind so i promise you they will do it especially if it's a deer that is big and mature and and definitely worth shooting they're going to do it every single time okay so you might be asking yourself how often do i need to call and I don't really keep this too specific or whatever. I'll, I would say about every 15 to 20 minutes. So you got to think of it this way. If you're calling on the edge of like a bedding area, they're probably going to be there or they're not. Okay. So hitting them every 20 minutes is going to be okay. You might catch them coming back into their bedding area. Cool. Call every 15 to 20 minutes. But if you are in a transition zone, meaning you're along a trail or something you think they're going to be traveling down maybe it's in a saddle or whatever i would i would probably call it even every 10 minutes because what that is that's a travel corridor and you're going to be catching those deer as they're coming through especially during the rut they could potentially be chasing does in and out never know but you might catch them off guard one time with the call so definitely keep that in mind all right, so let's start talking about early season grunt. Okay, like we said, you wanna keep it soft, not aggressive. So what I typically do is like I said, I keep it between the doe and the buck. That way it's not a very aggressive buck. 
but I want to do short grunts. Just real, and this is called a contact grunt. Okay, just real short spurts of grunts there. Nothing aggressive. And what that is, it, some people even call it a social grunt. So what that is, early season, bucks are traveling in bachelor groups where it's just a bunch of bucks together and they're being social. Okay, one might be eating over here. Guess what, they'll, they'll grunt. And that lets the other deer know that there's a buck over there. And a lot of times they'll go congregate or they might just get curious of who that is and go check it out. So definitely use a social grunt or a contact grunt to your advantage this year in the deer woods. Okay, moving into some other tips for calling. If you do see a deer and you're gonna call at it, let's say there's one straight ahead, don't point the grunt call right at that deer. Deer have very, very good directional hearing and they will, if you're in a tree stand and you hit a grunt at them, they're gonna look straight up at you. They are very, very good at determining where that noise is coming from. So what I typically do, if I see one out in the distance there, I'm either gonna point it one side or the other and hit it that way. And typically I'm gonna point it down. That way I'm not pinpointing the noise straight at the deer. Okay, so keep that in mind when you're calling. Don't point the call at the deer. Okay, so that is if you see a deer, okay? And typically that's a lot of times when people will actually use a grunt call is if they can physically see a deer and they wanna entice them to come in a little bit further into bow range, so to speak, uh, but a lot of times, and, and most of my deer have been killed by blind calling. That's when you don't see any deer around you and you're just hoping that you can pull one in by you know hitting a few grunts or rattling a little bit. That is what blind calling is. So with that, I'm gonna try to determine, once again, where the wind is blowing and where I want the deer to come from or where I think they're gonna come from and that's gonna determine where I'm blind calling at. Okay, and I'm gonna mix it up a little bit with the blind calling too. You know, I might move around just a little bit. That way I'm not pinpointing a single direction at my call. Okay, so that's blind calling. I do blind calling early rut and post rut. It's a great way to get some bucks to come in. And if you're not blind calling, I'm telling you right now, you really should. A lot of people say, oh, you can't call a deer in from a distance. I promise you, you can. Most of my bucks have been killed by blind calling. I think I've only killed maybe one that I've actually seen the deer in the distance and tried to entice it to come in. So definitely hit them with the blind call. Okay, so where do you want it to start your calling? Okay, let's say it doesn't matter um, pre-rut, rut, post-rut, post it doesn't matter. A lot of times I will try to target bedding areas. Bedding areas are great because that's where the deer go to sleep. Okay, and deer might have multiple bedding areas, but if you can pinpoint at least one or two of those and set up on the outside edges of those and maybe put your stand up or hunt off the ground, it doesn't matter. Get in there, do some blind calling if you can't see them. That will pull those bucks out. I guarantee it during the rut they will. Uh, they tend to get really stupid during the rut and they will come into calls like no other. So definitely get out there and do some calling during the rut. But bedding areas, transition zones, and those food sources are all gonna be great areas to do some calling. If you know a place where they go eat on acorn flats or they're going into an ag field and you know where they're coming from, set up on one of those trails where they're coming from, hit some blind calls and you're gonna entice a buck to come in. I guarantee it. Those are just some really good areas to do some calling. Okay, and another tip that I just thought about is let's say you do have a buck coming in and you have limited space to actually take a shot. Let's say one of your clearings is very, very small and you wanna stop that deer right in that window to where you can make a shot. Do not hit them with a buck call. Okay, a lot of times if a buck hears a mature buck grunt, a lot of times they will tuck their tail and run so what I would do is put it on doe, or you can just go meh, meh, and that will stop a deer a lot of times if you just do the meh thing, or hit them with the and that should stop that deer in that window. It's not gonna be a guarantee every single time. A lot of times they'll take a few more steps afterwards, 
So it's kind of a hit and miss on that. A lot of times you might hit it and they'll stop dead in their tracks and they'll stop right behind a tree. Or you might hit it and then they just keep making a few more steps and they're out of that window. So it's hit and miss. This might be one of those things you have to gauge a little bit just from trial and error, see what works for you. But those different deer are gonna act different every single time. Okay, so that was just one more tip for the grunt call. We're going to transition into talking about the rattle system. And what I have right here is just a Primo's rattle bag. And you can see this thing has been used for many, many years. I bet you I've had this for 20 years. Very, very effective calling system here. I would almost say this is more effective than the grunt call, especially during the rut. And we're gonna talk about pre-rut first, but what you wanna do is get some type of rattle system that you're comfortable with, whether that is a set of rattling antlers, which work amazing. I love a set of rattling antlers, especially if I'm doing a lot of ground hunting because I can really get down in the leaves, rake those leaves, really sound like a bunch of bucks, really fighting it. And what I like to do, especially when I'm rattling, is I like to envision myself as one of those deer, or at least watching a set of deer <laughs> kind of spar it out, right? So you can kind of put yourself in that place and actually kind of just have that mental image of what to do, okay? So you're not just clanging the rattles together. Uh, but definitely early season, you wanna keep it very light. A lot of people say tickle the tines is all you're doing. I know I have a rattle bag, so I can't really tickle the tines, but oh, all we're gonna do is just, just real light rattling. So once again, during the early season, they're establishing that pecking order. They're just sizing each other up. They're not full on, you know, sparring it out yet. Uh, sometimes they will. I'm not gonna lie, I've seen bucks kind of spar it out pretty hard during early season, but a good rule of thumb, that way you're not scaring gear off with one of these because you can scare a big buck off with a set of rattling antlers, is just keep it nice and soft. Okay, really just tickle those tines. And that's one thing I love about the rattle bag is that I can really control how loud I'm being. And I guess you can with a set of rattling antlers too, but the thing I love about this is it's nice and compact and I can just put it in my pouch, especially if I'm doing a lot of just uh, you know, stalking and stuff like that, I can really just pull this out nice and easy. And I don't have to lug around a set of rattling antlers. And these are sound very, very realistic too. So definitely get yourself a good rattle system this year and put that to the test. I guarantee you, you're gonna pull in some big bucks with that. Because another tip for a rattle is I like to really get high in a tree. And the reason for that is when those deer go circle downwind of you, when you start rattling, cause they wanna see how big that buck is that they're about to engage in a fight with. Uh, they wanna see that, that deer. So if you're high in a tree, for one, hopefully you're out of their peripheral vision and they're not gonna see you uh, potentially doing this, right? So they're not gonna see you doing that. And another thing is hopefully you're out of their scent zone to where they're not gonna wind you. Okay, especially if you're high on a hilltop somewhere and you're definitely the highest point, the wind is just gonna be blowing it right over their heads, hopefully, and you're not gonna get winded. So one downside though, to actually calling out of a tree stand is that you're not gonna be as realistic. You're not gonna be able to ruffle up the leaves. You're not gonna be able to, you know, stomp and make it sound realistic. And I get it, that's more towards the rut where you're actually getting very aggressive with it, but, it's gonna sound just realistic enough out of a tree stand that you're hopefully gonna pull them in and you can really just call softly. Okay, so that is all early season calling and we're gonna take this and apply it to the rut. Okay, when you get into the rut, you can definitely get more aggressive with it. And with the rattle, you can really, you know, start hammering out that rattle real hard you can really act like you're a set of bucks just going at it, competing over a doe or competing for dominance in that area. And it's gonna really pull them in, I promise you. Uh, but what you're gonna be doing with the grunt call is you're gonna be getting more aggressive with the grunt call too. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down a little bit further 
still trying to mimic maybe a young buck because if we're really trying to pull the big buck in, we don't want to act like we're a buck that's bigger than that buck. So we're going to act like a younger buck. That way we'll have a better chance of pulling that bigger one in that's going to try to fight them off for either the doe or that area. Okay, so with the grunts, we're going to get a little bit more aggressive. We're going to be able to make longer grunts, not just those contact grunts. We're going to be able to do a longer tending grunt. Okay, those grunts are very, very effective. Once again, every 15, 20 minutes, I like to do that. And you can actually do more than just those. Uh, we'll talk about the snort wheeze. We're gonna talk about another set. It's kind of like a tending grunt. They will do it, I call it the trailing grunt. And they'll do that as they're about to either uh, breed a doe or tend them. And that is, you know, they'll follow behind doing this. And then they might hit them with a, a longer grunt. It just depends. I've seen a lot of different situations happen in the woods to where they do different calls, but I've definitely seen them while they're chasing those around, hitting with those little bitty short grunts. And then that's typically what they do right before they wanna breed a doe. So they're still trying to find the doe they want hit them with that, you can really play out a good scenario. Uh, a lot of times with that, I'll go ahead and hit a can call. And I know we didn't talk about the can call during the early season, but you can still use these as well. They really work well during the rut though. And the estrus, doe bleat. And estrus is when, you know, they're in heat and they're ready to be bred. So definitely hit them with a bleat. And I have a couple different ones too. So you can hit them with those. A lot of times the bucks go crazy for that. They're still trying to find that hot dough. So definitely use a can call for that. Or you can slide this mono slide up if you have an extinguisher. Hit a few estrus bleats and then act like you're a buck following them. And then that's a nice little scenario to play out. Give those bucks a visual that there's another buck chasing their does around. And a lot of times that'll piss them off and really pull them in. So just another little calling sequence that you can put in your back pocket and use this year. Okay, the last one I wanna talk about is the snort wheeze. Okay, and I'm gonna feel like an idiot doing this on camera, but it's a very effective call if you do it right. And you can buy uh, grunt calls that have the little snort wheeze tube on it. They sound okay, but you can do it with your, your mouth very easily. And with all of these calls, I've found that it doesn't necessarily matter how realistic it is because every grunt call sounds a little different, but every single one of them, for the most part, sound realistic enough to draw those deer in. And it's the same thing with a snort wheeze. Okay, a snort wheeze is when that buck has all that testosterone built up, all of that aggressiveness built up, where he's fighting off other bucks, he's really wanting to breed that doe, and he's letting everybody else know that he is ready, he is mad, and he wants to breed that doe. So he'll let out a snort wheeze. And that's just letting all the other bucks know, don't mess with him. And that goes like this, don't laugh at me. <laughs> Okay, that right there, you really wanna get that guttural feeling into it because that's what they do. It's not just a shh, shh. You could probably even do that and it would get a buck in. Once again, I don't think the realism has to be there. It's just more of a, okay, that sounds close enough type thing. Uh, but definitely if you can get some more of that guttural sound into it, it's really gonna help you out with calling in using that snort wheeze. Okay, so let's move out of the rut and go into the late season. Usually that's like the early December time frame to about mid-January. Here in Missouri, bow season lasts until about mid-January. So you can still get out there and do a little bit of calling. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit difficult sometimes. Uh, once again, we're gonna go back to not using very aggressive methods. We're gonna call a lot softer. 
uh, with the grunt and with the rattle. I probably wouldn't rattle that much anymore. I would probably stick to either doe bleats or the grunt. And you know, I killed a, a pretty nice buck back in 19 by using a just a contact grunt in that late season and the deer just came right in. Uh, so what you have going on during that post rut is you have a secondary rut. A lot of times, uh, usually first week or two in December or even into January, a lot of times those younger does will start coming into heat later in the season because they were younger. So just naturally, they're gonna be coming into heat later. So you still have does being bred. It's just gonna be at a different time and there's not gonna be as many of them, but you can still take advantage of some of those calls especially a doe bleat or a grunt call to try to set up that little scenario to pull some bucks in late season. So where I would call is probably either bedding or food sources. You could probably catch them in a transition zone, but you got to think post rut, they're going to be wore out. The does have been chased. You know, they've been bred a lot of them and they're just tired. The bucks are tired. They're not going to be up on their feet as much in transition zones. So that's why I would target either bedding or the food sources. They're gonna be packing on the food. So definitely target the food, that's gonna be a big one, but the bedding areas are just as good. Uh, so that's pretty much all we have today. I'm pretty sure I probably forgot something like I always do. Definitely hit me up in the comment box below. Uh, if you have any questions concerning calling an early rut or post rut, or just anything guys, hit me up in that comment box. I hope you liked this video. Hopefully it gave you a little bit of insight on kind of how to call and this might be for beginners or if you haven't used calls before hopefully you got something out of this and you know calling is one of those things i think that has helped me uh really put the the bucks down in the past uh i usually call just about every time i go out in the woods it's one of those confidence things and you're not going to get a buck in every single time you go out in the woods and call but it really really increases those chances of you pulling in a buck so definitely use it if you haven't before. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. Like, subscribe, join our channel, and thanks for watching. Keep it blue collar.